So today let's take a look at this vintage multimeter which was donated to me, so thank you for your donation and for a long time there was no vintage device in my channel, so let's take a look at this one now. It's kind of a multimeter which measures voltage and current. You can see the switches for voltage ranges, current ranges and here you switch AC amps, AC volts. Now it's DC amps and DC volts. An interesting switch, double sided. And here's some calibration knob probably. The analog meter with multiple scales on it. And those terminals. And it seems like it has one terminal for current, one for voltage and a common terminal. Which strangely says plus, so is the positive one the common one? That's weird. And some other holes. It says 300 millivolts and 60 millivolts. So it also has some other holes for some very low voltages. So this voltage switch goes down to 1.2 volts, but it has extra inputs for very low voltages, 300 millivolts and 60 millivolts. And here's the analog meter in it, made by Metra in Czechoslovakia, quite a long time ago probably, and here's a mirror on it, so that you actually see if you are looking at it at a right angle, because to read it accurately, you have to take a look at it at a right angle, and the mirror helps you to see if it's a right angle or not. When you take a look at it at a right angle, the needle is actually above its image in the mirror. So this is why high accuracy analog meters tend to have a mirror in them. And from the other side, you can see some switches on it, because there is some cover missing on it. There used to be some cover, just like this one, on those switches, and those are very nice mechanical switches. It's like a copper contact sliding on some brass contacts. Very nice. And this voltage and current switch, and also AC-DC switch. And the last switch doesn't move. This one moves, this one also moves, but this one is completely stuck. I can't move it. It's stuck. Is it welded? Did somebody put a very high current into it? Or did it somehow mechanically fail? Or did somebody glue it in a place because it doesn't work? I don't know. And here is the box for it, which is quite nice. You can lock it here using this very antique looking mechanism, a bit rusted. It's probably wooden and it's soft from the inside, so the meter doesn't get damaged. And there is some cable for it, or a set of cables, which looks very dodgy. It looks like almost DIY, with those banana plugs, and one end of it is just cut here. Now the question is, does it work? Let's set it to DC volts, 6 volts, and plug those dodgy cables in and connect it to a battery. And does it show something? Actually nothing. It doesn't work. I also tried different cables, the other polarity, but it doesn't do anything. It's completely dead. But when I plug a resistance meter in it, does it show some resistance of the coil in it and the resistors in series with it? Well, it does. 1.5 kilo ohms, 6 kilo ohms, 12 kilo ohms, 30 kilo ohms. The number of kilo ohms somehow correlates with the voltage in volts. So it's like 1 kilo ohm per 1 volt, which means that it draws about 1 milliamp when it's measuring at its full scale, basically. So it has to be a 1 milliamp analog meter, basically. So it seems like it's not open circuit. The voltage range switch seems to work, but the analog meter doesn't show anything. And the current meter input shows 5 or 6 mega ohms for a current meter. A current meter should have a very low resistance, so it doesn't drop much voltage. 
So this one is probably open circuit. It probably has a blown fuse or blown shunt resistor or something like this. And as you can see, the analog meter has a double scale for DC and for AC. And the one for DC is kind of linear, but the one for AC is kind of compressed at the beginning, which is probably to compensate for some voltage drop of a diode or a rectifier in it. And there is also a scale for low AC voltages, which is also compressed at the beginning, also because some diode probably. It doesn't work, so now let's take a look in it, of course. Let's try to see the internals and maybe fix it. And it's old, so the screws are slotted screws for a flathead screwdriver, which I like. And there are some very old screws with some strange washers and this cover made of some very strange material, very thin but non-conductive. And here you can see some shunts in it. Those are probably the current shunts for the current meter. Those basically work as low resistance, high power resistors. I can see no damage so far. Let's go deeper into it. There are some other screws here. Maybe if I can find some blown resistor or something. But in the worst case, of course, the analog meter is bad, which is probably not possible to repair. Two screws come out and does it open now? Or maybe even more screws here? It definitely contains more screws here. This one is very tight. And another two screws here and here. Bloody hell, each of them is a different length. That's annoying. So I have to store them such a way that I remember which one is where. The top ones are the shortest and the bottom ones are the longest. And that's it. And does it come apart now? It doesn't because I probably have to remove those knobs. They have screws in them to remove them from the shafts. And there is a tiny warm screw in it. It comes out. A warm. Does it come off now? This is definitely not the easiest machine to take apart. This one comes off. There is some washer. This one comes off. But this one is just completely utterly stuck. It looks like somebody put a glue in it. It seems like this multimeter has seen a lot of abuse and probably somebody blown some ranges of the current meter and so he put glue in the knob so the blown ranges can't be used and there is also a glue in the screw and the screw is completely chewed. Another problem is that without removing this knob I can't open the box. Or maybe the screw didn't hold the knob on the shaft properly and it was slipping so somebody tried to glue it the knob to the shaft, but he accidentally also glued the knob to this dial. It was maybe a failed repair, trying to glue the knob to the shaft and accidentally gluing everything together. But in either case somebody completely screwed up, so I have to use a brute force now. So now it's opened, but it wasn't easy. It seems like somebody tried to fix a slipping knob, which was slipping on the shaft, by gluing it to the shaft, but he basically ended up filling the entire thing with glue. Not only he glued the knob to the shaft thoroughly, but he also glued the knob to the front panel and the entire shaft into the device, into this plastic housing. This is the most destructive restoration I have ever done. When I was trying to separate the knob from the front panel, it shattered. Here you can see remains of the glue and also this glass cracked on it. And I had to also completely shatter the knob in the process and here is the metal insert in the knob. Basically those knobs have some metal ring inserted in them. And this ring just doesn't come off easily. It's completely glued and after shattering the knob, 
I was able to basically take the screw like this and unscrew it, but this one is still on the shaft and the shaft is completely glued in this one. And also this hole in the plastic, it's kind of a plastic tunnel. It also cracked in the process when I was trying to basically make the shaft rotate in it because the shaft is completely glued into it here. And after a lot of struggle I may actually remove this metal ring from the shaft. Maybe. Okay, so now the ring is removed. And let's try to somehow make the shaft move in it. So the current range switch does move a little bit, but just using this tool and quite a lot of force. It's full of glue, so let's set it to the highest range, to 6 amps, and after I reassemble it, we can test it. I also glued this cover very crudely together and I put some new glass in it for protection. Basically fixing a damage done by a glue using another glue. And the glass is held in place by those few springs here. And here is the analog meter and I'm not sure if it works or not because even the voltage ranges don't work. And it's basically a permanent magnet in it, a core and a coil that rotates in the magnetic field, basically. The more current through the coil, the more it rotates in the magnetic field. And this is the calibration of it. Not sure if it works or is it stuck? Well, maybe it's also stuck. This is not in the best condition. This is probably not fixable, but at least you can see the internals of it, which look quite interesting. There is also some rubber seal to make it waterproof or at least dustproof. It's not really waterproof, it's just to prevent the dust from getting in. And here you can see the resistors in it, which are not actually resistors. They are basically coils of a resistive wire. They are switched using the switches. This one is the bad one, completely glued. There is a lot of coils of a resistive wire. A lot of coils from the other side of the switch. And the voltage switch also has multiple coils of a resistive wire around it. They are switched using the switch here. And those switches are basically copper contacts sliding on some brass contacts. It's like multiple contacts stacked on each other for better contact. And there are also some vintage capacitors, 4000 picofarads, which is for nano, plus minus 10%, 400 volts, and some other capacitors here, and another resistor made of a resistive wire. And another one here, and here's probably the permanent magnet in the core of the analog meter. Quite a lot of resistive wire resistors. That's amazing. And here you can see the contacts in the switch, which switches AC and DC and also current and voltage. Those moving contacts. Very nice. And there is multiple other contacts from the other side, but it's not easy to see. Can you see that? It's switching now. And this is probably, I guess, some vintage bridge rectifier. It seems to have four contacts. Is it some germanium or selenium rectifier? I don't know. And once more the rotating coil in the magnetic field. And the needle which is probably getting stuck. Occasionally. So let's remove the scale because this doesn't work anyway. And here is the magnet and the core and the rotating coil. Which is getting stuck. Maybe there is some debris in it. Could I clean it? So I took the coil out from the core. It was in this round hole. So this is the coil which moves around some 
metal cylinder and it has some bearings and there are two very fine springs one here and one on the top and they have double function they move the needle back but they are also the connection to this moving coil and the magnet in it is kind of collecting iron dust so let's clean it using even stronger magnet a neodymium magnet small pieces of iron are attracted by the magnet and they make it stuck now it's moving more or less freely it's not getting stuck anymore now it seems to kind of do something at least the current meter dc current meter let's measure the short circuit current of a battery because why not it shows something so the dc current meter kind of works even though i can't switch the ranges of it but i wonder why the voltage meter doesn't work i was trying to trace the connections from the input through the switches all the way into this analog meter and i noticed one thing one of those resistive coils has a broken end the end of the resistive wire basically just is in the air can you see that this is it can i solder it back into place now it shows something but not accurate and there is another coil and its terminals are kind of shorted out but why removing the short circuit doesn't help not sure if it's a botch from somebody or if it's from a manufacturer and it's not what i call calibrated but it does something so the voltmeter kind of works after fixing this broken resistive coil and the current meter works on its six amp range and those are the dc ranges the ac ranges also don't work for some reason maybe the vintage bridge rectifier is damaged the dc current meter works nicely so at least the dc ranges work and i can fix it further in the future now let's put it back together so now it's back together to the extent possible and it partially works and i have to say that this was my worst restoration disaster but of course the worst case for a repair is something that somebody else already tried to repair but anyway the main point of this video was to show you how does it look like inside especially to the younger viewers who may have no idea that people didn't always have clever digital multimeters and i also have to say that those multimeters were really easy to blow because they have no protections or fuses if you set it to a low current and connect it to a higher current or to a voltage you destroy it probably also the voltage ranges have no protection if you set it to a low voltage and connect it to a higher voltage you may easily destroy the resistors in it or even the analog meter a voltmeter of a modern multimeter has basically a very high internal resistance usually 10 mega ohms on all ranges no matter the range it always has 10 mega ohms input resistance but those analog multimeters have different resistances for different ranges you basically switch the resistor in a series with the analog meter and the resistance changes on various ranges and the lowest range 1.2 volts has only 1.2 kilo ohms resistance which is very low and if you connect this to a mains voltage or something like this or any higher voltage you destroy it in a digital multimeter you constantly have a very high internal resistance and you switch basically taps on a series combination of resistors and even if you set it to the lowest range you still have some very high resistor in series and some voltage clamping like a zener or some anti-parallel diodes before it goes into the analog to digital converter chip so even if you set it to let's say two volts and connect it to mains you usually don't destroy it but of course there can be more ranges this is just an example but in an analog meter it's completely different 
You are changing the resistance of the meter by switching the ranges. The input resistance changes and if you switch it to a very low range, very low voltage, there is just a very little resistance in series with the analog meter and if you connect it to a high voltage, you probably destroy it. Even if you had some voltage clamping on this meter, you still blow this resistor. For example, the internal resistance of this multimeter is 1.2 kilo ohms at its lowest range, 1.2 volts. And if you accidentally connect it to mains, it will draw this current and dissipate this power, 44 watts. So you easily blow it up. So now it's back together and I will store it maybe for a future restoration and maybe as a donor of parts to restore some similar multimeter in a better condition. So this is Dark Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And I also plan to take a look at this nickel metal hydride charger and also this shop protection device on it. Which is also quite interesting. I have some of those already cut and they have balls.